awesome. We are ready to start our masterclass. So welcome, good morning. I feel like it's a Monday. Give me a comment below if you feel like it's a Monday as well. Um, today is all about sketching, drawing, painting, and it's all about technique. But don't be frightened by that because techniques is kind of just a posh word for um, how to do something. So like you have a technique of putting your clothes on in the morning. Maybe you start with your socks and then your trousers. Maybe you start with the trousers, then your socks. Let me know. <laughs> I'm definitely a start with your socks kind of person. I wanted to say a very, very warm welcome. I'm really excited about the masterclass because first of all, I really want to hang out with you guys. Secondly, I am running two competitions. Competition was so much fun when we did the 12 days of Christmas create you creativity challenge. And so I was racking my brains to try to work out what would be valuable and what would be a great um, competition idea. So here's my idea. I have an Art by Anna Marie page, uh, which is a business page. And on that business page, there is a little um, photo and a promotion of this masterclass. It's called Create You. And I'm kind of holding up some sunflowers, I think. I would like you to share that post to be entered into the competition. So if you go late, don't, don't do it now, go over later and share that post and I will put your name in for the competition. If you also like the post, I will put your name in twice. And if you comment, I will put your name in three times, but you have to share it to um, activate the first nomination. What you're gonna win is going to be announced tomorrow. So this is a super, super quick competition just to get everything started. And isn't it great to start with a win? And what you're going to win tomorrow is a free month in my Art Skill Academy. So you'll have me as your tutor. We'll do all the stuff that we do in the Art Skill Academy together and you will have a free month. It'll be the free month of either January or February, you can decide. Um, if you're already a member, you can still enter. I will just credit you the month. And if you're thinking of joining up, that's fine. You can just credit the month. And if you're not sure about joining up yet, you still enter because you'll get a free month, possibly. So that's my competition. Give me a little love heart or say yay if you think that that's a good idea. I've been racking my brains to see what we could do so that we can announce the winner tomorrow. Um, so that's the first kind of housekeeping business. Um, the other thing I wanted to check in with you guys about is how are you feeling today? Because we're going to start our masterclass and I think when you start creating it's really important to be in the right frame of mind. Sometimes there's so much going on around you like maybe you know if you're anything like me, you have to wash the boat, you have to wash a car, you have to do your clothes washing, you have to wash your hair, <laughs> um, feed the cats. Like There's so many other things going on in your mind. What I wanted you to do today was I wanted you to start today's activity from a place of joy. And by that, I mean, I want you to be joyful about starting something creative. I don't want you to be nervous and I don't want you to be apprehensive and I don't want you to be thinking, I can't do this. I don't want those negative things for you. I want you to just tap into your six-year-old joy, any six-year-old that you kind of put down a set of paint and pencils in front of is usually quite joyous. So I want you to tap into that. That's the key thing for today. So let me just check in with you guys and see who's here so I can say a quick good morning and then we are getting started. As I do that, you might wanna make sure that you have um, a rubber, You're gonna need that today, a pencil, I didn't get my pencil ready. Can't follow my own instructions. <laughs> um, a ruler, some paint, some paper. Yeah, I think that's what you need. Okay, so very, very good morning to 
lovely 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 people oh there's so many comments so if i miss you please do forgive me because i'm very aware that you know we want to get started um lovely lovely people um pauline thank you so much um you could hear us and we were moving around um i thought if you guys think it's a good idea i'll just go live a minute early um just so that everybody has time to kind of jump on and then get started. So hopefully that worked for you today and you could hear us. Morning Marilyn, morning Robin, Nicholas, Sandra, Kathy, Pauline, um, Susan, um, I think Angela. Oh, you like the competition, Angela? I hope you win. <laughs> well, I hope you all win. Um, Karen, Tina. All right. Um, can you say again what we have to do to enter? Do you know what? Kath's here and she'll probably... Will you write something up about how to enter the competition and she'll put it in the comments. I know that sometimes I think I'm super clear and I've been told on repeated occasions by a, a vast amount of people that I'm not as clear as I think I am. Um, big hello to Paul, who is definitely going to post his... Um, his window later today because um, he promised he would yesterday. Um, morning to Sean, Tracy. Okay. And hello from England. Yes, I'm also in England. Okay, so let's get started. All right, first thing I'm going to do to measure up my window is take my ruler. Now I would often do this freehand. I am so terrible when it comes to um, when it comes to using a ruler. I'm just the worst and um, and I have learnt by experience that you can definitely do a rectangle freehand um, but it just looks so much better if you use a ruler. And look I'm not even really that accurate when I use a ruler. It's terrible. Um, so here is my my rectangle. Actually, I've done a square. Here is my square for my um, my window, and I'm also just going to put up on screen the measurements that I've kind of mocked up as well, so that you don't have to rely on me talking and measuring at the same time. Um, Catherine has two rulers and can't find it either. <laughs> She's using a piece of dowling. That's awesome. You can use any straight edge. Um, you'll see later what I mean. Um, so I'm also going to go in um, about half a centimetre in to do the inside. I'm looking at my design, which is upside down for me, but oh, I can look at it at the computer. So I'm going to take it up half a centimetre here from the bottom and go in probably about not quite half a centimetre again. This is one of those um, British kind of windows that are done. Um, you know the ones where they kind of go quite in from the wall? Uh, What's that called again when you have like a um, a deep set wall? So it kind of is meant to go in a little bit like that, but you don't need that in the picture. So here's the outside sash so that this comes out. We're going to do a line under here. Trust me on this, that line there. And then I'm just going to do it about two millimeters. Go down about a centimeter. You can see why I've put the image for you guys. Oh, hold on. I think that's meant to go down straight to there. So that's meant to follow that line straight to there. I have practiced this. <laughs> All right, there we go. So that's the outside. If you look at my image, that's that's all the blue bits of the um, of the window. Now we're having a look at the white bit 
that we've coloured in. And all we have to do for that is to um, draw a box. So I think I'm going to take mine um, to be four and a half centimetres. But again, you can just... Um, my square is actually working out to be exactly four and a half centimetres. So I've done a box in the middle of all these other boxes. <laughs> there you go. Lots of boxes there. Then all you have to do is find the middle of this box. So the middle of four and a half. L quick little bit of maths for you guys. The middle of four and a half is two and a quarter. And then just rule down your middle here. Which will be the same over on this side. Here we go. That is all we have to do with the ruler and the pencil we might come back to in a minute. So what you want to do now is change over to your pen and we are going to outline all this pencil and then we're going to rub it out. If you don't have a pen that is waterproof, and you can test that it's waterproof, well, mine actually says waterproof, um, you can test if you're not sure. I wasn't 100% sure that these ones were waterproof because I've used them so much I've scratched off the um, instructions. Um, you put them on your piece of paper, um, let them dry, because they are ink um, pens, and then put some water over them. If you're not sure, you can skip this marker stage and you can go straight to the painting stage and use your marker at the end. That's completely up to you. All right, now I don't use the ruler at all. So that's the exciting bit. You don't have to use the ruler now. You can just go over all your lines. Now, do not go over this bottom line here, okay? So we wanna take the first one and it's like a an N. We're drawing over the letter N. And we're not doing a box. We're going to rub that line out later. We just put that line in to help us with our, um, our measuring. The next one is a letter N. And the reason I don't use the ruler the second time is because the thing that's so awesome about these watercolour illustrations is that the lines end up looking quite um, sketchy, which I love. So just link that one across like that. We're going to completely draw this box in the middle, the actual window frame. Now, for this bit, we put our measurement here in pencil, but what we're actually going to do is we're going to follow the line around and create four boxes. Those pencil lines we're just using to help us segment our window pane properly. I could have got you to do all these lines in pencil, but I'm all about cutting corners. <laughs> Look at that! That looks like an awesome window. Okay, here's our window sill line. At the end of the window sill, it's actually a little bit rounded. And see here, I haven't even really gone over the pencil completely. Um, I've kind of made my own new line and I'm allowed to. And you're allowed to. How awesome is that? Now don't rub out the bit that you just finished on. I've frozen. Let's see if I've frozen. Not for you? 
Okay, rub out any lines that are um, in your way. I sketched harder than I usually would because you guys are watching. Um, and this sketchbook does not like to be erased. <laughs> Make sure you get rid of this one. And then lastly, do the bit you finished on. Because if you do, if you start with that bit, you will smudge it. Ta -ta! There is our window. And that is step one done. That, you know, you could walk away now. Please don't, but you could walk away now and that would be awesome. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually start to colour in some of the image with watercolour. And I've chosen my blue. It's a Phaleo blue. It's, you know, the standard one that I always use. It's my favourite one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this upside down N and I'm going to paint it within the lines. And the reason I'm starting with the upside down N on the outside is because I actually want to, I want to paint some of this outside as well. Um, and I need this paint to dry because if it doesn't dry, then it'll bleed into my uh, wall. And while that is a lovely idea for some grass and trees, it's not a great idea when you're trying to do a frame. So how thick you want this watercolour to be on your window is completely up to you. If you want a brighter colour, you can go for um, less water. If you want a lighter colour, mix it with more water. What I mean by that is not get more water on your page. What I mean by that is have it so that there is more water per pigment. So imagine you had um, five drops of water and one drop of pigment, that would be more water. If you wanted it to be darker, you'd have two drops of water and three drops of pigment. So you kind of look at the ratio that way and see how you go. One of the top questions that new painters always ask is how much water do I put on my watercolour? And you, you know, if you're new to watercolour, you'll know just from this activity, oh, I've put too much on or I've put too little on. And the reason that this kind of activity is so important is because this is just a sketch. That's why in this masterclass, we didn't go into our full-on amazing um, painting. This is our sketch of our painting. This is where we're starting. We're starting from here together. Uh, I'm going to do some blue in the middle. And I'm kind of going to show you what I mean. I'm still using the Phaleo, but I'm actually mixing it with more water this time. So inside here still going to be the same blue I've used but look how much lighter it is or in watercolor we just call that transparent it's a lot more transparent absolutely in love with this paper at the moment I'm trying to contain my joy <laughs> it's just so much fun to use this is my brand new sketchbook for 2021 and I am a little bit in love with it. Um, so this bit here where the blue is has to dry. This is white so that's fine and this bit down here has to be blue as well. You don't have to do a blue window frame. I'd be really interested to see what colour you decide to go with. If you decide to go with the blue or change it up. I think that's 
that's the exciting thing about painting. Now, I am off grid, as you know, possibly you know. So I don't have a hairdryer, but what I do have is my little 12 volt fan. So um, usually I would just get up and go and put this near the fireplace. Is that noise going to annoy you? Um, but what I'm going to do instead is just let that dry a little bit because um, I want to show you how to do the outside. The really important thing about this kind of masterclass that we're doing is that you're learning a technique and this technique is something you're going to have to build on and that's what we're going to do tomorrow we're going to build on this technique we're going to do the next practice one as well and then we're going to go on with our big awesome painting that you're just going to be so super proud of and that's also the way that I've set up my art skill academy I've spent a lot of time thinking about how to perfect the art skill academy for you guys um, and so for the members we actually go in and we learn a skill and then we build on the skill and we sketch the skill and we practice it and then we meet each month in a live drawing session and go through what it is we've learned, anything we're struggling with and also create something together which I think is just so important these days. So if you are thinking of joining an artist group um, then I will put the link below to the Art Skill Academy which is just launching this month. I'm going to talk to you some more about it but if you click the link you'll notice there's an early bird rate and there's also a founding member um, a bit of information and also there's some bonuses just for January. Um, all right, the great thing about this paper, it's gorgeous. I want to, I just love how that mottles over on the side there. Um, I think that's dry enough. And we just used the little 12 volt. A bit archaic. <laughs> all right, so now what I want to do is I want to go in the middle with some of the um, what you'll notice here some of this greenery and if you look at the outline you see that my my marker outline my ink outline is very squiggly but the impression through the window is actually a lovely garden or a lovely view so I'm going to show you how to make that happen and I'm going to go straight in with my pen because I'm really um, impatient, but feel free to go in with a pencil if that's what you want to do. All right, so behind our window, we have a kind of hill. As soon as you cross the border in a window or something like that, and you cross the border like that, you instantly create depth. And that's um, really important in pictures like this. We can create depth with color as well, no offense I think that maybe that'll be a different lesson <laughs> the color depth just for the moment we're going to do it with our line so we've also got have a look at my blobs they aren't exact so please remember we are coming from a place of joy for our creation today I just thought they would be nice blobby bits of um you know how like some posh people have um those fluffy kind of hedges, those fluffy trees. You might be one of them. I'm sometimes one of them because I can moor up wherever I want. Then I wanted to take these autumny kind of trees that are a bit thinner, a bit bob more bobbly at the top. is very similar to that. All right, that's going to dry now. I do know that if I, um, I do know, sorry, I was reading some comments. Kath pointed them to me. I'm going to get to comments in a minute. Um, so, you know, please keep adding your feedback and I will definitely get to them in a minute. I just want this bit here to dry. I'm changing over to a slightly bigger paintbrush than I had planned because I've noticed that my paper really doesn't um, respond to small paintbrushes incredibly well and I'm going to use the brown ochre as my uh, wallpaper colour however um, 
you do the walls whatever color you like I think the reason I choose this ochre is because it goes on really beautifully and it's um, not very transparent so I'm going over the white spaces taking it right up to the ink part and it doesn't matter if you go over it doesn't matter if some of the blue bleeds into the ochre color um, that's all, just all part of watercolor if you want to be super exact go with a smaller paintbrush And just for the edges, I'm just going to continue with a quick bit of color here. And the great thing I like about these kind of images is how the, the watercolor finishes there. And when you're using a sketchbook, like I'm using a sketchbook, it's so great when you open the page and there's lots of different drawings on one page um, and they overlap or they meet or whatever. It's such a lovely thing. Okay, so that's going to dry. I'm moving back over to my small paintbrush and I'm going to go in to my hill with a bit of golden green. I'm going to take the same colour from one side of the frame to the other side. If you're having a problem spreading that colour all the way into the triangle, while your paint brush is um, still got paint on it, just dip it in with a little bit of water. I'm also going to take um, a different tone of blue, I'm taking Prussian blue, um, and I'm putting it in my sky, but I'm dabbing in water. That's going to create a cloud. can see it better in this one here this is different kind of paper if you cover this in watercolor and then you dip in some water it's going to spread the watercolor out and create a cloud okay. and then all we're doing to create our trees is if you only have one type of green that's not a problem you can add a bit of yellow to it when it's closer to the grass and when it gets further away and it's closer to the sky, you can add a bit of blue to it. That's if you only have one kind of green. If you have all the greens in the world open, then you can um, use whichever ones you like. The idea is not for these bits of um, shrubbery to be that um, precise. You want them to be a little bit blurry anyway. Um, so you can always make them a little bit blurry. I decided to make my trees a little bit brown as well as though it was a bit of a change of season and the way I did that was adding a little bit of purple into my green. But you can have whatever colour you like. You can go straight into the in with the red with the green as well. And that will make a, a variation of, of green. These ones might take a little bit longer to paint because you're waiting for everything to dry. As long as the uh, greens don't end up bleeding into the frame, which they won't because we know we dried it. Um, then it's fine, it's fine for it to be all mottled. So how are you feeling <laughs> coming from a moment of joy, coming from creating um, and sitting down and giving yourself a bit of time? How are you feeling about this technique? Remember, um, and, and specifically, you know, how did you feel about the drawing aspect? We haven't done a lot of drawing together. Um, how did you feel about then outlining it? How do you feel about the application of the paint? Um, 
Um, the thing that a lot of beginning watercolour people struggle with is the time to let it dry in between um, if it touches itself, uh, touches another bit when it's wet. Like how did you go with that? And I'm going to just duck quickly into the comments and see how you went. Um, I'm super proud of this one. I think um, it's exactly what I wanted. Um, it's definitely a really pretty design. You could, um, if you're like me and you've got extra pieces of paper here, you could even put a little vase. Um, a vase on this windowsill would add an even an extra layer of depth. So then it would go vase, frame, um, garden. And that always looks spectacular when you do something like that. So um, there's a few things that you can do with this technique. The idea for this masterclass is to practice this technique. So your homework is to make sure that you have practiced how to draw an outline and paint because tomorrow we're actually going to do a bit of perspective. We're going to travel down a laneway together um, and we're going to draw that, which is really exciting. You want to have this part kind of um, you want to be feeling confident with this part um, so um, let's have a little look I'll see how far I can kind of flick back to big thank you to Kath for putting the art skill link down there oh hello Chloe so good to see you um, um, Okay, there I'm up to where we're at. Um, Marie says her windows are a bit wonky. Seriously, if you looked at these up close, you would be like, this is structurally unsound, which also happens to be the name of my graduation exhibition from art school in 2000. And 2000. <laughs> um, Marilyn says, I will need a bigger paper than my little sketchbook for the final picture. Will I need? Um, the final picture, Marilyn, I'm going to do on an A4 piece of paper. So tomorrow I'm going to do my second sketch here. And then on the next time I'm going to use my A4, so A4 size. Um, there's no reason you can't use an A5, like half of this size. Um, you just sh would shrink scale down the image that you're going to do so it's completely up to you we're not doing anything crazy you're not going up to a3 or anything like that so it depends how big your sketchbook is um Judy's going to catch up later um <laughs> all right so i've gone too fast for veronica uh, lots of people watch the first one keep up as much as you can and then just go just like remember where you kind of lost track and go back and pause it which is why it's taped as well um and robin's going to pop back in later marie you're loving this work i'm so glad kathy says great um yeah and pauline's giving veronica a little bit of help Pauline's lovely. There we go. That's your first class done. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please enter the competition tomorrow. I'm going to come straight on and announce the winner of the free month membership. If you want to join the Academy also, then we're going to be online taking the members for that. And But basically tomorrow, we're going to go on with this technique with a bit of perspective. Um, and yeah, create together. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed painting with you. I'm super proud of what I've painted and um, I will see you tomorrow. Bye.